Tagar Mala uh, has been one of the most ambitious and a very well crafted uh, uh, program of the government of India. It essentially has four or five verticals. One is of course about uh, capacity enhancement, uh, modernization, but at, at the same time it also talks about port-led industrialization, about digitization, about looking at coastal uh, communities for example. So if to uh, uh, quote some figures on uh, let's say the infrastructure or port modernization, almost 236 projects uh, with, uh, with, with, with the value of about 1.2 lakh crores is what is the kind of money that has been spent by the government of India on these projects. This is an amazing construction site. I am uh, so pleased to be here today because uh, seeing is believing. I have been briefed by my colleagues on how the work is progressing, but coming out here, I am deeply impressed on how people are working so hard day in and day out to advance this uh, important project. Now, I look forward to working closely with my friends on the Indian side uh, so that uh, we continue to work in the spirit of one project, one team. The thing is that the government is very clear that aviation, which was at one time considered an elitist mode of transportation, that it needs to grow because it acts as a catalyst of economic growth, number one. Number two, it gives connectivity to smaller cities, which government's emphasis is on. That why only should the planes be flying between metro cities? Why not the underserved, un unserved airports? That is what the emphasis has been of the Modi government. And they've been moving in that direction. As a result of which, the number of passengers flying in the domestic sector has, is creating records virtually every week. Hmm. Now we have almost 4,40,000 passengers flying on a daily basis on the domestic sectors. Now, what does it indicate? That people want to fly, people need to be given more flights, more airports have to be created in cities which are hitherto unconnected, so that is what happens. Now, what will happen basically from the people perspective? Once you have a very huge network within the country, there is faster movement of passengers from one point to the other. There are several places which are of tourism, tourist interest. So tourists visit those places because they've got air connectivity. And the third and more important thing are that if local produce can be exported because of the time factor, air, air connectivity provides shorter time, so you can start exporting things. So when you look at from the economic perspective, a big win for India's economy, a big win for the people who are resident of the areas close to airports. And once you have more airports, the Prime Minister very very rightly said, from 74, you get on to 147 airports, and then look at the next branch of airports, etc. We are going to witness a big, big change in Indian aviation. That's one part. The second part is we all know that Air India has placed orders for 470 aircraft. Now, when you have 400 of the narrow bodied aircraft, a good chunk of them will be flying within the country. Now, you need to have infrastructure to take care of the increasing number of aircraft which all airlines, including Air India, are going to be adding in the next two years. So government is in the right direction. There has been a tremendous growth, nobody can deny this, mm -hmm. in the Indian context in the last uh, decade. It is remarkable. Right. I mean, you, you, you are, there are visible assets which have been created. Just imagine, uh, if you ever go to the New Delhi airport, the T2 terminal, mm -hmm. uh, the, the people in T2 terminal are no different from people that you would find in the ISPT bus station in Delhi, which is a journey which the people of India have been able to accomplish because of the development of the civil aviation sector. Number two, roads. India used to construct roads at approximately 12 kilometers per day in 2015. Mm -hmm. Now India is able to do that at almost three times the pace, 36 kilometers of road construction per day. 
this is a remarkable achievement number 3 electrification of all villages i mean can you imagine uh, we used to talk about our country's growth and development and when we still had parts of india there was no electricity it is today a significant achievement that every nook and cranny of our country has electrification this is a remarkable achievement so very few people remember that the entire railways in india was built by the private sector between 1855 and 1890 and that was the first public private partnership in india where the private sector raised the money the private sector constructed it today we are in a situation where 100% of the railway construction and maintenance is done by the private sector in contracts the private sector is not paying the government is paying uh now in the national monetization pipeline there are three specific areas where the railways is inviting private participation the first and the most important to my mind is railway station redevelopment the second is logistics and multimodal logistics uh, 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 transshipment hubs and the third which was tried was running of passenger trains India will indeed become uh, number three uh, in terms of the global ranking of GDP as a country. It will you know, reach there. So, for instance, if you look at certain kinds of uh, infrastructure, you know, which play important role in people's lives. So, you can talk about, let's say, pipe drinking water. You can talk of. Uh, Uh, let's say availability of sanitation facilities toilets and so on clearly the numbers are there they tell you that our performance has been reasonably good